at the revelation of God and once again uh, the revelation being God sharing himself with us and showing uh, his character and his being and his ability and all those good things with his people and the psalmist wrote this in Psalm 119 verse 18 open thou mine eyes that I may behold the wondrous things out of thy law you know we're every one of us here and uh, we're human believe it or not that's a, that's a deep revelation. But as humans, mankind, we're in a quandary because if God does not reveal himself to his people, we will not learn of him. And the second quandary is if we don't open our spiritual eyes, he will not show us anything. And so how can we learn of him? How can we gain understanding and revelation of his character and his being uh, God has put each in, in each one of us a measure of faith and that's biblical that that we've been given a measure just a small amount of faith and uh, that measure is enough to entice every say entice. entice God has put in every one of us it doesn't matter whether you grew up in church or with a Christian background or or, or from the depths of Africa uh, God has put in every man every person a measure of faith enough to entice the person to hunger after something. And they may not have it all together and, and just go directly to Jesus Christ, but, but there's a measure of faith that puts something inside a man that says there's more to this life than what I have, what I yeah. see, and what I experience. And, and so there's enough that we would hunger, begin to hunger after God. And then if we begin to hunger after God, amen, that, that, that measure of faith is enough to prime. And uh, if I can use that word to for us to receive more revelation and more understanding and, uh, of the one who created all things for his pleasure. If we hunger, and, and this is where uh, the Bible says we've got to get to the point where if we will hunger and thirst after God, then we are going to be filled. And, and so the onus really belongs to you and I to search for more understanding, more revelation. Some people are content with the very basic. They don't want to grow. They're, they're not hungry to grow. They don't want to grow. They don't want to learn more. And for whatever reason, they're just at that point and they say, and they don't come out and tell you, but this their lifestyle and their choosing say, this is where I want to remain. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, go further away, but I don't want to draw closer either. I don't want to lose what I have and I don't want to gain. I'm just happy where I am but uh, so the onus belongs to you and I to search and long for more over the last few weeks we've been looking at foundational revelation that God has shared with us and and what this foundation foundational revelation is sets us apart from the typical Christian world or Christian society we talked about being one God Amen. God being spirit the dual nature of Jesus being both man and God and Jesus being also the creator before all things were made, he was. And, and last week we talked about him being our king. And, and I say these things separate us uh, because doctrinally it really does. Mm -hmm. Amen. Doctrinally, uh, when you look at Israel, they were separate from all the other uh, other uh, people or or other countries, nations, uh, groups, cultures. Uh, they were separate from the world. Amen. And they were taught there was only one God. That's a major, major influence. Amen. We are separate because we believe and teach that Jesus is the same God. Amen. That ha and has become everything to us. Someone once said in a derogatory manner that, that we are Jesus only. We are not Jesus only. We are Jesus everything. 
Amen. Amen. We are not Jesus only. We are Jesus everything. God robed in flesh, spirit taking on bodily form, for in him dwell the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Tonight we're going to uh, look at Jesus being uh, the rock. And, and so we're going to be talking about a lot of symbolism tonight and, and, and a lot of meanings. But at the end, I'm hoping to bring it all into perspective to what we're going to be talking about. And once again, all this teaching we're doing is to empower us. Amen. And also enhance our walk with God. If you read your Bible, and we're not going to go to the scripture, but in Exodus chapter 17, uh, we, we read the story of the children of God in the wilderness of sin. They just came out of Egypt, to, and, and they're camping at a place called Rephidim, and, and they had no water to drink. And so they began to grumble and, and complain to Moses, amen, over this issue, saying he brought them to the desert for them to die of thirst. Now, isn't that the way of man? And, you know, we, we come this far and God just brings us here to let us die of thirst. You know, the Lord brought us this far in our relationship with him to watch us suffer. No, no. But they, they began to speak to Moses and the and Lord spoke to Moses. He said, go to Horeb and, and, and there's a rock there and I want you to strike the rock and water is going to come out of it that the people and the animals are able to drink. Now, understand this. This is not a family atmosphere here. There's over 2 million people and all the animals. And so this rock, amen, had to water all these people and all these animals. And so Moses obeyed God. He went, struck the rock with the rod, and the people came and they, they drank from the rock. And, and, and I remember as a kid or, or a young person in high school and elementary school walking up to the fountain and there'd be a lineup of people of four. And you're just waiting for somebody to take their drink and go. And they're slipping the water out of the fountain. You know how it is. And, and you think you're going to die of thirst. Imagine the lineup in Moses' day. Now, we, we don't sense that. We don't see that. We don't imagine it. But imagine if you could the lineup of people to get a glass of water. Millions of people. The second time we read of this rock is found in Numbers chapter 20. And, and it's only, it seems just a, a little bit of reading in between. But, but it, it was found in Numbers chapter 20. And, and now it's actually 38 years later. Now, 38 years has gone by between mentions of this rock. The first time was near the beginning of their journey, and the second time was near the end of their journey through the wilderness on their way to the promised land. Now, we get excited, and I hope we get excited. We need to be excited that we're able to come to church, amen, twice or three times a week. We're able to hear the word of God, amen, preach and taught. We, we can go online every single day and find something, some preaching somewhere, yes. amen, 38 years. God speaks to Moses again because the people were thirsty and they had no water for some reason. And they came to Moses complaining, so Moses went to the Lord again and, and told him about the situation. The people are disgruntled and, and uh, uh, about their bareness. Uh, they're tired of being in a place that they had no grain, no, no pomegranates, no figs, uh, uh, no vines, and no water. It was here that the Lord spoke to Moses and told him, now, instead of going to the rock and striking it, he said, go get the elders of the nation. Go get your elders and, and bring them to this rock, and you're not going to hit the rock this time. You're going to speak to the rock. Now, Moses, and, and understand, Moses is human just like you and I. And Moses, in front of the people, for whatever reason, did not speak to the rock, but he struck the rock with the rod, again, like he did the first time. Mm -hmm. and, and so he relied on old revelation. Everybody say old revelation. Old. He relied on 38-year-old revelation, amen, to bring about a new thing from God. 
we could be stuck somewhere in the past. And we can say, well, wasn't that a great move of God? Look what I received from God 40 years ago. Look, look, God spoke to me 20 years ago, and, and I remember it like it was yesterday, but God has not spoke to me since that time. Sometimes we, we are like Moses, and we rely on old information, not the change of information. Doctrine will never change, but God's revelation is always being updated in our life. Amen. We're not in the Old Testament where God spoke to Moses every 40 years. We're living in a generation, a time period now when God can speak to us every single day again if we choose. And so back to the story of the rocks. In both cases, water came out of the rock. And in both cases, the, the people were, uh, were drinking and, and uh, they, they were feeding, uh, giving water to their animals and, and all that in both cases. In both cases, the rock had the same name. It was called Meribah, which comes from the word that means disgruntled. Now, this fact tells us that the rock that Moses was told to strike in the wilderness of sin and the rock that he was told to speak to 38 years later in Zin were the same rock. In the book of 1 Corinthians, Paul was writing, amen, of Jesus Christ. And he said, that, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all of our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, talking with the uh, children of Israel going through the Red Sea. And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was, was Christ. Now the word Christ means the one to follow. But it also refers to Jesus Christ. To some, Paul may have been writing, into writing something strange here, but this is what he was inspired to write. And we understand that naturally water cannot come from a rock. You, 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 you can't strike a rock or take a rock apart and find a, a pool of water in the middle of it. We also understand naturally that a rock cannot follow anything on its own. You cannot get a rock to follow you around town. You've got to pick it up and put it in your car or on your back or in your arms and carry it. So we see the natural is overcome by the supernatural. Because we know of a surety, it's in the word of God, that water did come from the rock. And we know from what Paul was saying that the rock followed the children of God. We read in the journeys of Israel that God gave them manna from heaven to eat daily. And so, so they, they, they ate every day. And, and when the people complained about being tired of manna, God said, okay, I'm going to give you quail. And, and he gave them quail. So the food was there, but it was different food. But it seems like the only supply of water in the desert came from this rock called Meribah. Now, here's the importance of this. A person can go one or two months without eating. You, 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 you're going to get tired, you're going to get weak, but you can live one to two months without eating food. These people go on strike or food strike or eating strike in prisons. All you're doing is saving government money. Yeah. <laughs> but with water, it's a different story. Even though an adult, adult is made up of 60% water, a person can only live three or four days without water. It doesn't take long, even that long, to become dehydrated. You can go just a couple days or, uh, you know, drinking some water. And if you're not drinking enough water, you're going to be lacking water, even though your body is made up of 60% of water. Yeah. Now, that, that's my scientific uh, medical revelation. Now, when we look at things with, through sim symbolism, and, and, and that's what we're going to do, and then we're going to pull it together. Biblically, water is symbolic of many things. The first thing is it's symbolic of the Spirit of God. 
Jesus said in John chapter 7, 37, in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. The second thing it's symbolic of is eternal life. Jesus answered and said to the woman, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith it thee, give me to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. This is John chapter 4, verse 10. In verse 13, uh, he said, to, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Mm -hmm. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. The third thing that water is symbolic of is salvation. Everybody say salvation. 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 Revelation chapter 21, verse 6, and he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega. Who's that speaking? God. That's Jesus talking, right? He said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Now, I, I understand we're talking about the rock tonight. We're not talking about water. And, and, and Jesus, and we're talking about him being the rock. And as Paul said, that, that he was the rock that followed. The rock is so important because it was not the rock, amen, that filled the wanderers with the life-sustaining water. Amen, it, it is what the rock gave, amen, that is what was so important. It was the water that was in the rock. Now, continuing in symbolism, let's look at the rock. A rock is symbolic of many things in itself. It's symbolic of salvation. It's symbolic of strength. It's symbolic of durability and power. Amen. And, and David wrote in Psalm chapter 40, he said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Now, what did the Lord do for David? He brought me up also out of a horrible pit and out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. So, so there's that foundation. There's that firmness. There's that durability. There's a, that strength that, that, you know, he was in a miry clay in his mind. I'm in a miry clay. And, and that's where we were also. That's why we sing that song. He brought me out of a deep miry clay. He set my feet on the what? The rock to stay. Psalm 18 and 2, and David said this, I waited, the Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. Psalm 31 and verse 1. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for a house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. David was not saying for my situation. I, I am in this. I need you to save me. I need to, you to put me on, on this rock. I need you to help me. But it's not for me, but your namesake. Now remember in the Old Testament that God did not have a name yet. They called him Jehovah, which means he is. And, and, and the, he didn't have a proper name. That's why it's important in the New Testament that, that the Bible says he was given a name that is higher than any other name. Now, we don't call him Jehovah our peace or Jehovah our, 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 our salvation or Jehovah. And we call his name Jesus. Jesus. I don't have to figure out what I need from him. I can, when I'm in the miry clay, I can call on the name of Jesus for his namesake. When Peter 
receive revelation of who Jesus was. Mark, sorry, Matthew chapter 16, verse 17. Jesus answered and said unto him. Now remember, Jesus asked whom do men say that I am? And then he said, who do you say that I am? And, and Peter answered him and said, you're the one we're seeking out. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now understand, Peter, uh, the, the name Peter comes from the word Petra, which means a, a rock or a stone. But, but Jesus was not referring to Peter as being the rock. Uh, he, he was referring to the revelation. It's not Peter. We're not building the church upon Peter. Although he may have been the first uh, 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 apostle, he may have been the first one to, uh, to share the gospel and uh, the death, burial, and resurrection. He may have been the leader at the time. But Jesus said, upon this rock, this truth, this revelation, I'm going to build my church. This revelation that God has given to each one of us because the revelation that you have received, amen, is the same revelation that Peter received on, uh, when Jesus asked, who, who do men say that I am? And when he said, who do you say to them? This is the revelation that Jesus said. It didn't come from teaching. It came from heaven. And upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. If we want to build a church, we've got to go back to the foundation. What is the foundation? Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. He is the promised one. He is the Messiah. He is the rock. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. In fact, it's going to be so strong and so powerful and such a mighty fortress. That the very gates of hell are going to come against it. And it's going to rattle and it's going to shake and it's going to quake. Amen. But it's not going to prevail against the church. Amen. It can say what it wants. It can threaten what it wants, but it cannot touch the church. It can't reach into where you are unless God allows something to take place. Like Brother Otis said a couple weeks ago, amen, whatever happens in our lives, if we remain in the will of God, God's going to allow some things to take place. There's some things that are going to cause us to shake and question and wonder. Why? Why would God do that? Because he is the rock and he wants you not just to sit on the rock and, and uh, you know, sit in the sun and get a suntan and, and, and drink your Coke or ginger ale or a cup of coffee. Amen. He wants you on the rock solid that when things begin to shake, you're hanging on. That's right. He doesn't bring you out of a miry clay to set you on and have a vacation. He sets you on the rock to stay. Hallelujah. Gates of hell shall not prevail. Now, when you take this symbolism of the rock together with the symbolism of the water, the power and the stableness and the strength joined together with, with the anointing that God has for us. And, and when I say the anointing, it's not just something we, we feel a tickle down our back. But I'm talking about that anointing that gets hold of us and sustains us and, and refreshes us and renews us. Amen. And, and renews our mind. and trans That's what the water does. You take a drink of water when you're tired or sore or hot and worn out. You take a drink of water. What does that do to your body? Oh, it just feels good. It's not feeling it. It's what it's doing that's important. It's refreshing the cells of your body. It's replenishing the energy in your body. This is what the water does. So you take the symbolism of this solid rock together containing the anointing of God and the sustenance of God. And you put these things together. Amen. And you're going to see how important amen, both of these things are when we start talking about Jesus. Jesus being the rock and not just being the rock, but containing the things we need. Whether we are in the wilderness of sin, and when I say the wilderness of sin, I'm not saying we go out in sin. What I'm saying is if we're at the beginning of our journey through hard times, through desert lands, through weariness and tiredness and, and through places that we've never been and seemingly going around in circles, we don't know where we're going to come. That is the wilderness of sin. 
or we're, we're at almost at the tail end of our journeys and, and, and maybe we understand or maybe we don't even understand, but we're almost at the end of the battle. When we've been going through, and maybe not 38 years, but maybe 38 days, 38 hours is too long. But sometimes we are in a battle for a long time. Whether we're at the beginning of a battle or at the end of the battle, it doesn't matter because wherever we go, that rock is going with us. What did Jesus say? I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you, I'll be right to the end of the world. So, so whether, whether you're right in the middle of the battle and, and the hot, piercing sun is burning on you and, and you don't know which way to turn and the dust is going down your throat and, and your eyes are burning in pain and, and, and all night you're just freezing cold because it's desert, you don't feel nothing, you feel empty, you feel broken, you feel weak, you feel out of control. Wherever you are in the perspective of this journey, God is going to be there with life-sustaining sustenance. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He'll be with us through the journey, amen, to the promised land. He, he, he gives us uh, all things pertaining to this life. As God was with the Jews in the wilderness and later on in the promised land with enemies all around. Now, you know, it's great to go back and look at Israel. It's great to look back at, at their wanderings and we, we can't really uh, identify with them. Because we're a total different culture. But wherever they were, they had enemies all around them. Hey, wherever they were, there, there was unknowns all around them. Amen. In life situation all around them. We don't have to identify because all around you in 2021, November 2021, all around you is the world. All around you is the enemy in the world trying to trip you up. All around you is your flesh that makes you want to question everything when you get tired and worn out and weary. Mm -hmm. All around you, there's enemies trying to get to you. All around you is life situations that we don't want. And we pray, Lord, deliver us. And you know what? Sometimes he does deliver us, but other times he makes us wander through the wilderness a little bit longer. Remember when, when they're in, in Egypt and they pray for deliverance? They say, oh, we, we got to get out of here. The taskmasters are too strong. They're coming and making things worse. God didn't deliver them. He, he didn't just, re, you know, take care of the enemy. He, he didn't put the Egyptians off to the side and just, you know, you know, just destroy them all. No, he parted the Red Sea and they walked out of there. Sometimes God will make you go through a hard time or allow you to go through a hard time because when they got to the wilderness and they weren't out of the problems yet, they were just in the wilderness. And they looked back and they saw the Egyptians being wiped out when the, when the Red Sea closed in on them. See, sometimes we, we see deliverance and we think this is the answer and we get up tomorrow morning and we have another problem. We say, God, didn't I just see the, the Red Sea close on that problem? Didn't I see it eradicated? Yeah, you did. But you're not to the promised land yet. That's right. I need you to go because when you're wandering around in the wilderness, you're getting strength. Mm -hmm. you're, you're learning to trust in God. You're, you're, willing, you're willing and able now to, and in all the grumblings and complainings, they still had to trust God. They didn't get up in the morning and look outside for no reason. They were looking for manna. They were looking for quail. Why, why were they looking? Because they knew that God was going to supply their need. In all their grumblings, they knew even the rock had water. Once again, the words of David in 2 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 1, David spake to the Lord the words of the song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, the God of my rock and him will I trust. He is my shield, 
horn of my salvation, the high tower of refuge, Savior, and you saved me from violence. That was not the end of David's story. There was another battle ahead of him, many other battles. Weeping and crying. Amen, tired and worn. Amen. But right now he's saying, Lord, you're my rock, my shield, my trust. Verse 32, he says, for who is God except the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? God is my strength and my power. He makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like hinds feet and set me upon high places. He teaches my hands to what? War. Well, if God's going to deliver us from everything, why is he going to teach us to war? Because he wants us to fight a battle. You don't teach an army how, 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 how to go into warfare if you don't expect them to be in a war. But that's what David said. The Lord teaches my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken in my arms. Thou hast given me the shield of thy salvation and your gentleness have made me great. You have enlarged my steps under me so that my feet did not slip. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill, distill as the dew, the small rain upon the tender herb, and, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. Why? Because he is the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth without iniquity, just and right is he. The writer was learning something here. And this is something that we need to learn. We need to learn that the work of God is always perfect. Mm -hmm. So God didn't call you by accident. God didn't, doesn't allow you to go through something by accident. Yeah. You think it's just coincidence. No, it's called God incidents. Yeah. And when God ordains your steps, if you're in the will of God, if, if you're lining up and, and trusting him, amen. If, if you're not, that's a totally different story. You're on your own. But God, if we are ordained of God, if we believe we're ordained of God and we follow what he says and believe in him, then we, we've got to understand and get this in our head that, that our God is always going to be right. That's right. He doesn't make mistakes. No. The same God that's sustained in the old is the same Jesus that will sustain in the new because he is our rock. Ephesians chapter two, Paul writing here. For through him, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Aren't you glad tonight that you're not a stranger to God? That you're not a stranger to the ways of God? Hey, you receive revelation and understanding. You're, you're not a, a foreigner now. You, you're a fellow citizen. You know too much. You're part of this kingdom. You need to defend this kingdom. He said, you're built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself, being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building, fitly framed together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are building together for a habitation of God, through the Spirit. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. That rock was Christ. Paul said, it's that rock that, that kept people. Amen. And that rock sustained them. And he said that rock was the one to follow, the Christ. This is Acts chapter 1, verse 1. Now, we read this scripture all the time, don't we? Yeah. And it's the beginning of the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. The former treaties have been made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments of the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. This is exciting. Being seen of them 40 days 
and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Now that's exciting in itself. But watch this. Remember we said earlier that the rock contained the sustenance to keep the people? Well, if Jesus is a rock, he's containing the sustenance to keep his people. Now, Luke was writing this, and, and he said, after the resurrection of Jesus, amen, he came and he spent 40 days with his disciples, with the apostles, and he was teaching them the things pertaining, the things pertaining or the things necessary for the kingdom of God. And he ended with the instruction, watch this, to go to Jerusalem to wait for the promise. He didn't tell them, I'm giving you all the things you need to know. He, he told them the things that are pertaining to the kingdom of God. These are necessary things, but now you need to wait for the promise. We know the promise is the Holy Ghost. We, we read that in, in Acts 2.38. We, we read the outpouring on the day of Pentecost. Uh, and that was a fulfillment of this promise. Uh, and, and this fulfillment uh, is not just so we can speak in tongues, but the fulfillment is to keep us. Amen. It's to sustain us. Uh, it's to empower us in this journey. It is going to be like the rock Amen. In the wilderness of sin and sin and everything in between the two, this rock is going to sustain us. But it's not just the rock. It's what the rock has given to us. Peter wrote to the church in 2 Peter chapter 1. He said, according as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Mm -hmm. He did not say the Lord has given us everything that we want, amen, but he has given us all things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Amen, and also to God, everybody say godliness. godliness. He's given us everything pertaining to our devotion. That's what Peter was right. Now, does this sound familiar? The same rock of the Old Testament that gave to the people a life-sustaining ability is the same rock of the New Testament that is giving you and I, the New Testament church, the same power in our journey. One more tidbit of information as my wife comes to piano. In Zin, everybody say in Zin. Yes. Lord told Moses to handle the rock, different from the first time. He told him instead of striking the rock, I want you to speak to the rock. A amen. In front of the whole congregation of elders. Now, even though Moses was called and Moses was chosen, and Moses was separated. Amen. And Moses did a great work. He delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt. He suffered a lot for the kingdom. His disobedience, everybody say disobedience. disobedience. His disobedience prevented him from entering into the promised land. Mm -hmm. what, what am I saying? I'm saying the same rock that saved the people in the wilderness is the same rock that judged the people in the wilderness. So what are you saying, Pastor? What I'm saying is it's the same power, the same rock that we enjoy the blessings and the sustenance and the refreshing and the renewal called the Holy Ghost is also the same that's going to judge us if we become disobedient. Just because God has called us, chosen us, separated us, empowered us, does not mean we're immune to God's judgment. We may have revelation of the rock, and we, each one of us here has received revelation. That's why we're here. And we, 
we have may have experienced with the rock and I understand and I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that everyone here has an experience with God we even have a great reputation with God we're his children when we worship, we, we sang, our, our opening tonight was uh, singing about our worship and our, and our praise and the sweet aroma of worship fill this room. Do you think the Lord's not happy when we worship Him? We've got a reputation, church. Not just a reputation in this city and our neighbors. We've got a reputation with God. We're free to clap our hands. We're free to jump and dance and shout. That's our liberty. We're in the embassy of Almighty God. And so we've got a reputation with God. But that rock did not save Moses, amen, in the wilderness, amen, because Moses disobeyed the calling of God concerning the rock. Let's stand. Jesus is my rock. He is a rock, you know, in this weary, tiring journey that we're about to close very soon. Amen. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the King. Amen. Soon and very soon, we're going to be caught up to meet Him in the air. I can just imagine. I, I, I just imagine the, the children of God that, that were on one side of the Jordan and, and they know tomorrow we're crossing the Jordan and we're going, that, there's a promised land. Or maybe a week before they're planning and strategically planning their, their route and, and what are we gonna do over there? Maybe maybe sitting down over over a cup of coffee, sitting in the in, in, in the truck, in the heat of the truck, or, or go by the lake, say, hey, on the shores of the Jordan, what are we gonna do over there? Isn't it gonna be exciting? I've never seen it. There's only a few that's gone on before, and, and, and it's a great place, but we've never been there yet. Soon we're going across the Jordan River. But until that time, we're still in the wilderness. And we still need to look to the rock of our salvation. We need to still put our trust in the rock. We still need to go to the rock for the refreshing and renewing amen, of all that God has for us. Let's worship God. say that 